My name is Maciej Szmigiero. I'm a principal member of technical staff of, at Oracle. I work at Konrad's Bilk uh, Linux Virtualization and Security Group under Boris Ostrowski, which is my direct manager. There I'm mainly responsible for Windows-related stuff, supporting Windows, especially if under Oracle Cloud. So the, today's talk is about uh, attempt to add a hot memory or RAM resizing capability to Windows VMs based on QM, because that's what Oracle Clouds is using via their native Hyper-V dynamic memory protocol. So because this is an uh, open source uh, summit, there is obviously first question is why support proprietary protocols in open source or free software ecosystem? Because that's, that's the question that people often, often ask in, in those cases. So the same reason for this is that for, for the same reason as for other Windows specific stuff in open source, like for example for Samba or for Hyper-V Enlightenment in, in KVM. It's simply because the customer wants to run Windows VMs under uh, open source, source stack. And if they don't get what they want, they will simply uh, turn to Azure and they switch to 100% proprietary stuff. So it's kind of like a, either we get something uh, or we they switch to Windows completely and we get nothing then as an, as an open source movement. So that's, that's the, let's say, justification. As for example, for, for Samba or for other stuff, like for example, for integrating uh, uh, drivers for uh, hardware that is not supported by the manufacturer. For example, providing a Linux support for on the M1 chips. So why have a hot resizable VMs at all? So the, base, the main reason is because it's very hard to forecast memory requirements with 100% accuracy all the time. So the, the issue is that cloud customer really, customers really don't want to reboot their VMs. They want to reboot it even for security updates if they, if they could. So, uh, so they really didn't want to reboot just, for example, to add some memory capa uh, capacity to, to the VM, so they will rather have it like everything done in the uh, while the VM is still running rather than, for example, at the reboot time. So it's always good if your uh, VM grows with the workload. For, so for example, if there is like a unexpected peak or unexpected load that the customer would have ability to add some memory to this, to this uh, to his VM if it turns out to be a bottleneck in, in his workload. And also, it also allows flexibility for the cloud provider to provide, for example, like a very budget solution where for when, when there is a too much load on the host, then, then the customer accepts that sometimes the uh, VM could have its memory removed partially in this case. So it's kind of like a trade-off in terms of uh, price performance. So let's review the existing VM resize solution before coming to the next, to the new one. First, the most obvious one is, is ACPA-based PC, PC DIMM hot plug, but uh, it has some limitations. For example, obviously, you have to have a slot for DIMMs. And currently, there are only like 256 memory slots in QML. Ob the obvious solution would be to increase this, but, but it's, it doesn't scale. Uh, at the same time, already, there are co some configuration which result in uh, ACPI tables being too big and uh, throwing warnings. And if you increase the, slot n the number of slots, it will increase the table size even more. And it's, uh, it's clearly that this solution won't scale, really. Even if we fix those problems, those, those slots have very high granularity. And that's, that's basically the size, def side effect of their limited number. And uh, the, once the slot size grows, it becomes very hard to actually remove this slot because even a single page then, which is stuck in the guest, could prevent this removal. 
so it's, it becomes less and less, uh, it's harder and harder to scale in this case. And also it is pos it is has a some performance problem because you have a this ripple effect on removal. And what I mean is that the basically the host does not have any information about the uh, guest layout of let's say uh, memory. And so it's possible that the host cat can can uh, always choose the wrong the most used dim to, to remove. So if we have this let's say situation that the there are three extra dims plugged in the guest A, B, and C. And A, B are nearly empty, but, but C is ne nearly full. And as I said, the host doesn't know this. So, so basically, in, in this case, it, it makes a wrong guess and removes the last one. So the get on, the, on the removal request, the guest wants to uh, free this stick. So it copies the, its content to stick B. And then the host also second time does the wrong guess and, and chooses stick B to remove instead of, of for example, stick A. So uh, once again, you have to copy the memory contents. Obviously, that's fixable if you make the host aware of the guest, uh, let's say, uh, usability of every stick. But, but it's always uh, it's something that has to be developed. So it's, it's something that's not there currently. Now, the second, second popular, let's say, resizing solution those days is Virtuio Mem. But it still has a fairly large block size. The, the current minimum, as, I, as far as I know, is one megabyte, which is like 256 pages. So it basically also has this problem that it one, one stack page in this block can prevent its removal. It's not as severe as, obviously, as a, if you have like 100, 100 gigabyte the dim stick or or or, or around this uh, order of magnitude site but but it's still not a management on the of the memory and the basic granularity of the hardware page and also there is in terms of windows there is no native windows drivers i i know there is was there was an anthem attempt presented last year at defconf cz by marek kanjerski there's a link uh, to the to his talk, uh, and uh, he mentioned uh, there is a lot of uh, issues with Windows kernel because you have to basically, uh, as with Linux, when Virtual Mem and and similar stuff was added, you have to basically have uh, access to a lot of the memory management internals there, and obviously with Windows that's that's a bit challenging, and also he, I think he noted that that Hyper V. Uh, dynamic memory protocol client driver in Windows actually uses a lot of, let's say, undocumented Windows calls, as, as one can expect. So, so it's something that will be fragile. If, for example, we, to, we are to write a client driver for Windows for Virtio Mem, and this client driver then uses some kind of like a, a undocumented Windows uh, data structures or, or functions, then it will be problem if Microsoft removes those in the next Windows version or, or even in the next Windows update. So, so it's like a ch rather challenging to add a support for Virtio Mem to Windows. Obviously, I'm uh, totally for uh, doing this if somebody, it's always good to have a, like a competition because it's good for business. If somebody wants to add the Virtio Mem client driver for Windows, then it will be great if we have something like this. It will obviously also uh, probably uh, maybe make Microsoft document those interfaces, which will help everybody because it's that will be more transparent. As I said, though some of those issues are theoretically, at least theoretically, fixable, but but it will be much more invasive. While this driver is pretty much self-contained solution, it it only requires a QM or changes and and. Uh, doesn't require any other st changes, for example, to the guest itself. So uh, in terms of guest resizing, the other stuff that is of often mentioned is uh, ballooning. And basically, we have to have uh, some kind of like a ballooning solution because it's required to 
to change the guest size at runtime with the required granularity. It, it doesn't matter how you call it. If you, you can call it like a small dims or, or ba uh, ballooned out pages, it is important that the uh, management happens at the very low granularity, at, at basically the hardware page level. And that's what ballooning usually uses. Uh, that's why that's why it's pretty much necessi necessity if you want to have these changes, uh, mem uh, guest size changes done with 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 a lot of uh, flexibility. So that's why the integration between the ballooning and hot add drivers is uh, desirable because if you we don't want to hot add to mem memory to a guest that has been ballooned down to, to some size. We want to first deflate the balloon. And once the guest is at the boot memory size, then we can think about adding a new me memory uh, ranges to the guest in order to increase its size. So we have some kind of like a, uh, it's good to have an integration between, the, uh, between those drivers because then it's easier to for the um, process controlling QM to actually manage those uh, those resizing. So in terms of ballooning, the virtual balloon is the currently preferred QMU ballooning solution. But the problem with this driver in terms of Windows is that the, its Windows client driver actually makes those ballooned out pages uh, as in use inside the guest. So obviously there is no way to, to remove the dim stick backing them because Windows thinks those, those pages are actually in use. So obviously, that's, that's solvable if somebody wants to, do, but, but it's, uh, as I said, it requires another changes to the guest though. And this is also a pure ballooning driver and protocol, so no way to, is there is no way to actually resize the guest past its boot size. It just, you can resize it down and back to the boot size. And also, it has a rather low performance because it's uh, the whole protocol, like a communication, it operates on a per single pages. There is no optimization. For for example, if you if you remove the large range, you want to have a granularity of single page because you can have like a stack page somewhere. But you at the same time, usually you you will remove like a big range. So so you want to operate on ranges. But it's, uh, as I, it's probably fixable too if somebody wants to do this and, and it turns out to be performance bottleneck. So what's the Hyper-V dynamic memory protocol? It's a protocol that uses Hyper-V VM bus, which is pretty much an undocumented bus because it's n neither the bus nor the dynamic memory protocol has been documented in the Hyper-V top level functional specification. I actually asked Microsoft for specs for this, but they say they will write this in some unspecified future. So, so it's not there yet. So QMU host support for the VM bus itself has been actually developed uh, by Virtuoso. Uh, that's a pretty much a big effort. So big thanks for those guys for, for doing this. I actually, the, it was actually, uh, let's say, orphaned recently, so I took a maintainership of those driver in QMU. So it's not a, like a, it has a, s it's almost self-contained. It doesn't ha require a lot of uh, integration for other QMU subsystems. So, so it gets very few, very low traffic. But it's still good to have it because it's a large, even if it's self-contained, it's a large piece of code. And it's uh, tricky. So uh, because we don't have documentation for this protocol, that at least we have a Linux kernel client drivers for this, so we can kind of observe it from, from the opposite side. Obviously, they only kind of document the only the um, messages and data structures th that Microsoft decided to use for, for their uh, Linux guests. They don't actually document everything that's possible when Hyper-V communicates with genuine Windows guests. So uh, we are limited in this, but wha it's what we can reverse engineer for Linux kernel client drivers, but at least they are a huge help. So good thing, uh, th so those were, let's say, bad things about the protocol. Good things is that the, it has a built-in support 
in win starting from about Windows Server to, uh, 2012 uh, revision 2. It obviously, newer version of Windows Server also have the support from this protocol. So probably the client Windows versions have support too, but but client Windows versions are not really run at cloud, so so we don't care that much for those. It, it's uh, pro obviously it should be 2019. Sorry for this. Uh, 2022, I haven't checked myself, but but I'm almost certain that 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 it also has support for this protocol. Whether it uses some kind of extension, I don't know. It has to be verified but but for sure the basic protocol support is there so the limitation of the protocol is that f it won't adversize hot add capability unless s4 support is disabled in the guest so uh, that's kind of like an incompatible with some vm freezing solution that are based on hibernation so it's like a small limitation small or maybe ma major if you if your provider wants to use the freeze VM via its client-side hibernation. So it's something to, to have on mind. S another good news is that the Windows, um, let's say, implementation of this protocol is, seems to be really determined to, to free the requested, uh, requested memory area. So uh, basically, it tries to free as much as possible. So if there is like an let's say 800 megabytes of memory in use in Windows and you request it to balloon down, it basically will remove everything up, up, up to this 800 megabytes and then it will uh, leave very little to spare. But it's uh, worth mentioning here that it won't actually crash, it actually has some kind of like a memory reserve. So even if you balloon it down to, to almost the, the required minimum size, it will keep the minimum reserve so it doesn't actually crash. And also, it's important that in Windows, s part of the kernel memory can be swapped to the disk. So, so they it basically will start swapping very heavily. And obviously, it probably does some kind of memory compaction, but, but it's Windows, so we don't know the details here. And I think that the enforcing the balloon floor, which is uh, the minimum size that the guest could be balloon down is best left to the guest because host host obviously does not have knowledge of what of the guest memory internals so so it doesn't guest kernel memory internals so it doesn't know uh, how low the guest could go i know there was a problem with a uh, hyper v client driver for this protocol for linux that it could go so low that the kernel would crash basically if you if you uh, set this uh, set it size too low and it's somehow related to the dyna dynamic memory vm setting in the actual hyper v because there is a setting like this in in uh, vm config in hyper v but it's uh, kind of a bit misleading be because it only controls the kind of automatic vm size management depending on the load on the host and if you manually change the vm size in hyper v even if this setting is disabled it will actually use this protocol if it if it can so so it's kind of like always in use if it's possible so let's uh, talk about the driver it was developed as a new driver it was named hv balloon after the linux cl uh, kernel client driver for this protocol and also to follow the pattern established by virtio balloon driver and this driver supports both the memory hot add and hot removal request and ballooning and for this because it's like a first version it, 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 it was easier the easiest way to do this was to plug it into qmu ballooning commands that is balloon and info balloon and let's say what was the driver is not it's not a cross-platform vm resizing driver it's it's limited to what windows supports it's currently only tested on x86 in principle arm 64 it should be possible in the future, but simply there is no requirement for the first version to have it. And obviously Linux guests aren't in scope because it's a proprietary Windows specif specific protocol. And the first implementation has actually been implemented using 
uh, a kind of like a universal packing device for memory HOTAD protocol. I call it HA, H, HA prods. And the, the dynamic memory protocol actually registers as a provider for those. And all this allows removing memory from guests in single page units via ba built-in balonic operation of this protocol because the dyna dynamic memory pr protocol it's both for you both supports ballooning and also hot out of memory obviously it has to not trust the guest because for example it could report that it's returning the pages that are outside from its current address space and then there will be a problem if there's those ranges are later later hot added For performance, the guest release memory is tracked in range trees. It's basically kind of like an extent tree in file system. And this required uh, a few new G3 operations to be added to glib. And this, the, they were already upstreamed and released as a part version of glib 2.68, like a year and a half ago. Obviously, the driver detects their presence, so not to break build. Uh, QMO with other GDB versions. Those using those kind of like a uh, range trees gave much better performance than VHO Balan, and you can see that it, that it uses like a almost three times the performance of uh, ballooning that the, the in comparison to VHO Balloon. Obviously, as I said, it is possible to integrate those those enhancements to Virtio Balloon too. So, so it's it's a kind of universal idea. And the basic HI prod device works like a virtual dim stick. By bit, it allows inserting extra RAM into guest at runtime. But the dim stick is not defined at the uh, VM start time. It's created at the runtime. And notifying the guest about the new memory range is done by this via this protocol handler, which in this case is the dynamic memory protocol driver. Obviously, the ACPI DIM slot does not apply, and the virtual DIM size is determined at the insertion time. And the protocol handler, uh, on the other hand, can inform the guest uh, about the removal of the device and the virtual DIM and do its own cleanup if, if that's the let's say operation that are, that are desired. As, and also as, as a part of those uh, let's say of this effort I also upstream a scalable memstot implementation for KVM since new each hot added memory range is a new memslot so so those this new implementation for KVM operate like a, on a pay as, as you go basis. It changes m mo uh, all those uh, linear scans that were there, which is basically which were uh, dependent on the count of mems to, to the logarithmic operations. So, so it gave a lot much better performance with a with a large number of mems dot and n the number of mems dot were increased from. 509 to 32k. So those those uh, Im improvements has been released in kernel 5.17. So as a summary, because we are running out of time, this was just the first attempt m MVP. So there is uh, still a lot of work to do. And then one of the most, let's say, things to figure out is to what to do on the guest reboot. Hyper-V seems to resize the boot memory to match the current guest in this size. But the implementing implementing this in QMU would be tricky because it requires a lot of changes. So it's quite an invasive change. Uh, at the same time, we try to avoid relaunching QMU with the new new guest size because that's kind of risky and also it breaks some workflows. Currently, the, the virtual dim sticks are reinserted after the guest reconnects to the dynamic memory interface. There is actually a waiting period for this, which is the same as the original Hyper-V uses. And obviously, they are, if the guest reboots, they are marked as not in use, so they could be removed. And there is also a small 
small other changes. For example, this HE prod, it's like a first attempt. We can probably do better and use better QMU interface for this. Obviously, NUMA awareness is an important stuff. There is a kind of like a virtual node member for the protocol messages. But it, it has to be investigated how to actually tell Windows and whether this actually changes somewhere in, in how Windows places its uh, satisfies its uh, memory requirements, whether this actually has the desired, desired uh, effect. And also, we want to have a HV balloon, virtual balloon coexistence because we want to use both for, for different kind of guests at the same QMU. So maybe they will, can be even integrated as a buttons for common, of a common user interface. So I think I'm running out of time, so I won't do a uh, live demonstration. So I instead go, will go to QA immediately. So are there any questions? Do you know if uh, Hyper will be behave the same uh, if it is Linux or Windows guest or if it tries to detect and do something like that? Uh, the, the question is whether Hyper V detects the guest type and does does something different depending on whether this is Windows and Linux. I know that Hyper-V has a guest type field, yeah. so, so it detects the guest type, but at the same time, uh, obviously the only protocol, resizing protocol that Hyper-V actually has, it's, it's, it's the, this dynamic memory one. So obviously that's the only one protocol it can offer to the guest, so there is no choice here, depending on the guest type. Regarding the virtual mem uh, driver for Windows, uh, the pull request was sent by Mark. It's under review now, so it's coming up. <laughs> so the, the let's say remark was that the virtual mem driver for Windows is being reviewed because it was submitted as a pull request to uh, by Mark. So great! It's it's great to have a competition, really. Yes. Right, so, yeah, so, so why not pair it with virtual mem? Why balloon? Uh, the question was wh why pair the generic interface, QMU interface, with ballooning instead of virtual mem? Well, it could be integrated, uh, it could integrate like free, uh, free things at the, at under the hood, let's say, as a, as a backend, or uh, let's say, uh, to, to execute the, the request. It's not pro. It's fairly possible to, to have like under one user interface to have virtual uh, mem ballooning and HV balloon, if depending on the, what the guest could use. It totally makes sense. It's a great, great idea, I think. Thanks. Yes? So um, if we use this interface, does that also change how Windows deals with zeroing out memory that it that was handed over to it? I haven't heard about any changes about this. So the question, I will repeat the question, is is uh, whether the using this interface actually changes something in Windows about the zeroing memory. I don't know about any changes. Maybe there, there are some. It's like a, it could be a, as a performance optimiz right, optimization exactly. for the future, but it's like a, for the version 3 maybe right. or 4. I was just wondering whether you knew anything about the Hyper-V interface basically that would say here's your memory and well it comes from me at zero out already anyway. So don't do I haven't heard about okay. this kind of interface that is basically tells the guest that the memory is already zeroed, but it, it will be a good, good performance optimization for sure. So any f ad further questions? So thank you for attending.